All right, welcome back to another episode of Just Buy Less Coffee, answering the deeper questions of American politics. My name is Troy, a.k.a. Keep Troy Blue. With me, as always, is Kathy Cannon, a.k.a. Cannon's fodder. Good to see you, Kathy. It is election yay, day. Yay. I just voted. I have my little I voted sticker, um, which somebody told me once that uh, that the I voted sticker, when they read it, all they could see was I farted. And like, I can't, <laughs> I can't get that out of my head now because every time I wear this, I'm like, oh, that looks weird. But yeah, that's so funny. Uh, voted in the primary today, the Arizona Democratic primary. Voted for Joe Biden. There was like seven other people on the ballot that I'd never even heard of. Uh, but seven I, uh, other people. That's great. Yeah, I probably cast my vote for Joseph R. Biden Jr. Are you gonna get out there? You're gonna have to. Uh, Robin at Jr. Yeah, yeah, it's a primary day here in Florida too. I was frantically searching for my driver's license earlier because yeah. I have misplaced it three days on vacation, man. And I don't know where my ID is. So that's fun. <laughs> um, but You haven't left the house in three days, dude. <laughs> it's got to be here somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm going to go I vote after really we record this. Okay. Oh, God. You don't understand. And uh, hopefully my, my teacher ID will work. We just looked it up on the website and allegedly... Allegedly, the state issued identification from the state in which I am trying to vote in the county in which I am trying to vote. Uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully uh, my that'll work. Whatever. We'll find out. Is there anything on the on the Florida primary ballot besides the like the president? Are you voting for anything else today? Um, I know my city has like commissioner uh, like muni there's municipal stuff. Um, these are our municipal elections okay. as well. So um, there is stuff, but. Nothing any of you in the TikTok world, not TikTok world. Wow. Okay. Podcast world. Give a flying fuck about unless you happen to live in this little corner of West Orange County. So, <laughs> all right. Hard hitting stuff. Pretty good. Yeah. This is why <laughs> they pay me the big bucks. There's literally nothing but the, but the Democratic candidates on the ballot that I, that I just uh, voted for. And there was like, there was like 10 poll workers just standing around. They're all like octogenarians. Like they got really excited when I walked in. I think I was the only person that voted today. Oh, it's... Sonny, where have you been all day? We they were so wait. excited and so cute. They were just trying to be so helpful. They're like, thank you so much for coming in. I love the poll workers so much, especially the old ones. Like when I worked yeah. in North Carolina politics, like I would fucking spend all day at the polls and I would just, because these are people who've been there since the dawn of time, who've been working at the polls since their granddaddy would take them to the polls when they were kids. They have so many stories. They'll tell you about like back when JFK was elected because they're a thousand. <laughs> And it's just it's, it's usually amazing. usually they're pretty good people like make pretty good intention. Uh, yeah, I've done some I've done some poll watching in the past. Sometimes you get people that are dicks, but by by and large the poll workers are always pretty nice. The internet was slow or something, and I couldn't print my ballot for like three minutes, and they were so apologetic. They're like, "Oh my god, oh, you're being so, so patient. Fine. Thank you so much." I'm like, "It's fine. <laughs> I'm clearly the I only one here. I'm not, you know." I always think it's cute when I walk in, they pull up because you know how you can see like how often you vote. So it's always like yeah. these old ladies who've had like the room empty all day. Oh, you're a royal or a loyal voter, aren't you? I'm like, that's me. I'm a big fucking nerd. <laughs> they're like, oh, 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 here's your vote. And then they're all like super nice to me when they see that I voted like literally more than once, which is like way more. Yeah. I voted way more than that. But it's always cute. You can tell that they they see like their neighbors and first time voters who they never see again. Cause first time right. voters are always there, but then they're like, Oh, I voted and I never wrote again. Uh, that's always fun. So I love I the poll worker. Definitely vote in definitely vote by mail. Don't, don't if you can don't <laughs> vote in person, but I like voting in person. It's fun. It's, you know, as long as there's not like a huge line or big cluster fuck, yeah. which usually there isn't. Um, it's fun. Um, I love voting in person. It's like I'm totally for voting by mail because if you're the kind of person who's not up to date on the issues and you have to like look up the amendments as you go, especially oh, yeah. on like, you know, music, I'm all for it. I think it's fine. Right. Um, me, I know what's going on in the world and everybody calls me to ask me about those things. So I feel pretty confident going in there to vote for things. Cause I, you know, I'm the nerd, but, um, <laughs> I just it's I've always voted that way. And that's the way I like to vote. Actually, I enjoyed voting by mail, too. But the DeSantis changed it. So you don't just automatically get your ballot anymore, which is the way it had been forever. And I forgot to request my ballot 30 wow. days out. The The beauty of the mail in ballot was that, like, forgetful fuckers like me yeah. would always remember because it would show up and I'd be like, oh, it's time to vote. He took that from me. <laughs> he took a lot from you. Took a lot yes. from your state. 
He's taking about eight hundred dollars a month for me between insurance premiums and all that crap. But that's the conversation for another. Well, day. speaking of dictators know. and voting, uh, so Vladimir oh, yeah, Putin yeah. won re-election uh, pretty handily. <laughs> in the, oh, shocking! In Russia, what with uh, his major weekend. rival being dead and all. Uh, Vladimir Putin won eighty-seven percent of the vote. The closest candidate to him didn't get more than five percent of the vote. Uh, only candidates. Putin was the only candidate to, to appear on the ballot. The only other, well, the other the other candidates to appear on the ballot were pro government. Were from pro government parties. Uh, we had Nikolai Kartanov of the Communist Party, Leonid Slutsky of the Liberal. I would probably Slutsky, but I would go ahead and call him the Leonid Slutsky of the Liberal Democratic Party. Um, Bill, I'm gonna call you a Slutsky from now on. Uh, and. Uh, Vlaslav Dav Davankov of the New People Party. Those are the four candidates. Uh, and Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin got 87% of the vote. Uh, election monitors denounced the Russian presidential election. Um, they were using government controlled electronic voting machines. Uh, opposition leaders obviously were silenced or threatened or left off the ballot. And this time, this was a fun one. The, they had Ukrainians in Russian occupied territories in Ukraine were forced to vote. Forced to vote, probably at gunpoint, and uh, forced to vote for Vladimir Putin. That was another big reason for taking Ukraine. It was a bunch of new uh, new Putin voters there, clearly. Um, not not consensual Putin voters. Uh, you know. So, yeah. I just, like, like, anybody that thinks Vladimir Putin is a legitimately elected Democratic president of Russia, you're trying to feed me that line. Like, one, if you try to feed me that line, I know you're stupid. But two, just... 87% of the vote in a country three <laughs> times the land mass of the United States. I just want you to find me a, like anything that 87% of Americans can agree on. Anything. Well, and and then make it a political leader that they're willing to vote for. Right? 100, like, 143 million people is the population of uh, Russia. That's crazy. Um, That's like three lot, times the land mass and half the population. That's wild. L large of uh, large chunks of the Russian population are like very remote, disconnected little like still communist villages that aren't even like the, the Russian government just kind of let the um, some of the uh, some of the communism continue in some of these remote areas, and they're just sort of sort of self contained little collectives. They don't even really re like they don't even really uh, operate under Russian governance or Russian rule of law. So really, until you just have they like need a, them so. until they well, need yeah. them. Well, <laughs> yeah. So you have like half the population, and then you know, just only a chunk of the population is actually like part of Russian society. But yeah, it, um, you know, eighty-seven percent of the eighty-seven percent. Yep. It's um, easier for Vladimir Putin to get elected in Russia than it is for a junior class to decide on pizza toppings. Apparently, <laughs> that is how effective finger quote his leadership is. I'm so surprised. Not even uh, IVF in, in vitro fertilization is not even as popular in the U.S. as Vladimir Putin is in Russia. Apparently, in vitro fertilization only has an eighty-six percent approval rating. Hey, you um, know what? There you go. So, People, like, I just think it's ridiculous. Like, if you're gonna rig an election, like, you don't rig the election with eighty-seven percent of the vote. You take a solid sixty-three, and you say, "Look, America, go." Oh, that's an that's a fucking sixty-three is a fucking landslide election. But no, this motherfucker's just got to get all greedy about it. Probably yeah, still mad, I, but it's seven percent. Why are they still doing elections? That's see, that's just like the Putin style of authoritarianism. You know what I mean? Like it's not like Saddam Hussein who's just gonna like. I mean, they had elections in Iraq too. Saddam Hussein would win with like a hundred percent of the vote, and like this this motherfucker still trying to like pretend like there's other people on the ballot besides him. You know, it's kind of funny. I mean, his major opposition mysteriously died a few weeks before the election. Gosh, I can't imagine why there weren't other people legitimately <laughs> challenging him. Like, it's just... It's And the interesting I thing think. about that, though, is there are, there's a lot of, like, opposition candidates. Navalny was by far the most popular, obviously, and I, I'm sure Putin saw rightly that Navalny was the biggest threat, and that's why he killed him. Um, but mm -hmm. Navalny wasn't the only opposition candidate. There were actually several opposition candidates that were left off the ballot um, mm -hmm. or forced to, you know, quit the race or whatever. Um, yeah, like that as well. He got 87 percent of, of the vote in a country where just like last week, he was violently arresting mourners attending the funeral of his opposition leader that he murdered. <laughs> no. Like, there's no, if you believe that that man legitimately earned 87% of the vote, then I 
have lands to sell you in the Everglades. <laughs> he is now uh, the longest serving, or I guess ruling, um, Russian leader since Joseph Stalin. Because, you know, uh, that's a club you want to be in. He has been the president of the president or leader of Russia in some form or another since 1999. Um, this mm -hmm. is his, this will be his fifth term uh, as president. The constitution was amended in 2020 by the Russian parliament to say that presidents could run for up to six terms. Uh, he actually, he actually dipped out for a few years in the, in the 2010s because you, you're only, they were only allowed to do two consecutive terms. So Putin actually obeyed the constitution and dipped out for a few years and he ran again. Uh, but then but the this time story there. Do you know the cute story there? No. What's the cute story? Okay. So he ducked out of being the president because he couldn't be anymore. So he served as prime minister and handpicked right. his buddy to be the president. And then while in that position, had the constitution changed so he could run as many times <laughs> yeah. as he wants to. And then to read, like, it's the funniest fucking thing in the world. Like, so was he the president? No. Was he the president though? Yes. You know? Yeah, well, it was, that was the that was the change for him was when he stepped out was still yeah. operating as like the puppet master behind the scenes. And then he was just like, fuck it, I'm the president again. <laughs> again I don't want to be like because Obama wouldn't put up with any of his shit. So he had to like play pretend democracy because Obama wasn't dealing with any of his bullshit. Yeah. So running for he's now in his fifth term. Um, now the Constitution allows six terms. So he could, uh, in theory, run again in 2030. He'll be in office till 2030. He could theoretically run again in 2030 and in theory be president until 2036. Um, if he lives that um, long. If he lives that million. long. He's already, he's 71 years old. Um, if he lives, so that'd be 12, right. 12 years, 12 more years of Putin. Um, if he isn't assassinated or something like that. Uh, but also, you know, they, or or they could amend it again to give him a seventh term. Who knows at this point? So. That is my, that's where my money is. My money is that he spends this next amount of time or just abolishing elections altogether. Be like, I will steal more countries and make myself <laughs> king. The, like the whole like abolishing, like even North Korea holds elections. I get like 100% of the vote. I think the leader of North Korea got 100% yeah. of the vote. Like even North Korea like holds elections. I don't like at least like grow a pair of dictators that just cancel your elections. Like, what are you doing? I don't get it. You know, it's a waste of time. They will never yeah. do that. It's because they are, oh God, I could go on, but no, he's yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Ridiculous. So on the ridiculous. Navalny stuff, um, a lot of it, a lot of, a lot of still really pissed off Navalny supporters. Um, mm -hmm was interesting there was a, there's a, they do a lot of these like subtle protesting because they can't like marching around with signs that say like fuck you putin will get you arrested so they have to do arrested. like Finger they have to do them. like um subtle things so what they did this time for uh the election was they coordinated over social media and they navalny supporters swarmed polling stations at the same time they all had like a, a designated time so they saw lines at these polling stations for the first time they'd never seen people line in in, in line to vote um, I, I guess because Russians know that their vote doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but there was a huge lines for to vote, and it was all these Navalny supporters that were either casting protest ballots or just trying to disrupt the process. Um, one woman told CNN, uh, this is the first time in my life I have ever seen a queue for elections. And then she said, you know why. I think everybody in this queue knows why. So she wouldn't uh, she wouldn't say mm -hmm. Navalny, but everybody kind of knew what was what was going on there. So interest more interesting protests. Uh, you know, right after Navalny died, they were laying flowers at the statues commemorating the victims of Soviet gulags, um, Soviet, Soviet political prisoners, which was an interesting take on that, I, I thought. Um, those people were arrested for laying flowers at those memorials. So got to give it up to the Russians, man. The Russians are, you know, the pro-democracy pro Russians know, know what's up when it comes to resistance, I guess. So, oh, yes. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes for, for Russia. We'll see. Yep, yep. Uh, so Vladimir Putin in there until at least 2030. Uh, yes. House passes the TikTok ban. We talked a lot about this oh, yeah. on the last uh, the last show. We were a day before they voted. Um, they voted. To, it passed the House. So it is mm -hmm. an effective ban on TikTok unless TikTok can um, divest itself from its Chinese parent company, ByteDance. Uh, and <laughs> be picked up by an American company or I guess or some, some other non-Chinese company. We talked a lot about this. Um, 
last time, the motivations behind it. I don't know. What do you think the next steps are on this, though, Kathy? So it's passed the House. It would have to pass the Senate and be signed by Biden. Biden, surprisingly, we were talking a lot of last time about how Biden would never sign something like that. But surprisingly, was signaling signals coming out of the White House that he was pleased that the house passed the tiktok ban that was kind of baffling i'm not really sure if he's just playing chess with them or what i still i i would be shocked if he's Biden not playing this tiktok ban he's not playing chess with them but he is playing chess i made a video about this i don't know if you saw it um because you've been in uh you know your own world but he's <laughs> <Okay>. um <laughs> uh he's trying to get china to change their law okay so like the video yeah, i made I mean. was basically everybody is is freaking out like well china cannot do this it's an effective ban i know and he knows that and everybody knows that and this is america flexing their economic muscle on the global stage do they know that this ban will die in the senate of course Everything dies in the Senate. You need 60 <laughs> votes to break a filibuster and Rand Paul exists and he will filibuster this bill just based on like the, I don't think things are yeah. more. So as long as Rand Paul exists, this isn't going anywhere. You could have 99 Senate, well not 99 because that would kill the cloture, but like point being, every Democrat could want to support this. Every Republican sans Rand Paul could want to, to support this. None of those things are true, but as long as one motherfucker can go, no, I don't like it, you're fine, okay? But what Yeah, I and there's, there are several Republicans um, on in both chambers, but especially in the Senate that are very opposed mm -hmm. to this, including Marjorie Taylor yep. Greene. And so, remember, yeah. it ha that's hilarious, though, because considering where she was a year ago, right? But, um, the other thing is, is like it doesn't have to just pass in a version. The identical versions need to pass. So what this is, is it's safe for right. people in the House to vote in favor of this because they know it goes nowhere. So the House is able to signal internationally that the United States government is actually united when it comes to managing our economic power on the global stage. America's united on nothing. But if they can flex a bipartisan House vote in a time where the House can't elect their own speaker to say this is how collected we are on this particular issue is it tiktok whatever fine it's the economic muscle of the united states the united states government is right now trying to signal to china like it's a threat like do what we say or we're going to take our market share from you china right. makes a lot of money off of tiktok i understand that it doesn't look like it is there like all of the economic things everybody is thrown at me oh they're only what like American consumers have a lot of money. American consumers buy a lot of things from China. TikTok shop has taken over TikTok, which has opened the door to a lot of new money for China. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the economic impact of like American small businesses. Like, so the Small Business Association is going to start lobbying like a, a bunch of things. It's not going to happen. But America wants to prove to the world that they still have the economic muscle to bully countries around <laughs> because there are quite a few countries right now that need to be reminded that America can bully you around because this will come later in the outline. Like, hey, BB, remember that we have an economic partnership. Imagine we didn't <laughs> like, hey, like other people, Russia, remember what we did to your economy? Hey, China, want to see what we could do to your economy? Like, that's what it is. It's China get in line, stop supporting Russia. It's China get in line, stop supporting whatever. It's we need you to do what we want you to do, or we're happy to take $250 billion of revenue away from you, even if it pisses off our teenagers. The that's an angle I actually hadn't thought of before. You know, we're we're kicking China's ass economically right now. China's in kind of a tailspin. They're um, on their way to their own 2008, so they cannot yeah, afford to lose American consumers right now. They have not recovered from the pandemic. Um, their housing market is is a disaster. Their job market is a disaster. Uh, Xi Jinping spent you know eight years or whatever just um, hyperinflating his economy and and building all these new houses and all this artificial uh, generating all this artificial revenue. Now it's all crashed. Their economy is completely crashed. So that's an interesting mm -hmm. take. I wonder if Biden, if it's worth it to Biden to kill TikTok just to, or even just the threat of killing TikTok just to make, you know, Chinese, the, the Chinese stock market collapse or something like that. You know what I mean? Just like well, economic that's warfare. Thing. That's how you know it won't pass because it goes back a little bit further because one of the things everyone keeps throwing at me in my comments is it's against Chinese law. Back in 2020, they passed a law that says that they can't sell. The government won't let companies sell their data. 
right. right. They passed that law back in 2020 when Donald Trump was the president and was fine letting China like pull rank and you know, consolidate their government authority because he kind of likes dictators. That law was a way for China to gain more control over the companies that they have. And it was that law that is freaking out Congress right now. Right. Because anytime the Chinese government takes a special interest in a company, it's worth the American government at least raising an eyebrow at that company <laughs> at the very least, you know? Yeah. So I think that this is just a signal to China that says, play nice. We know that you've been playing with Russia. We know you're talking to Saudi Arabia. We know you're pushing this BRICS currency. We all know the BRICS currency is a threat to the stability of the American dollar, and the American dollar is the global currency. So we know that you're putting a lot of your eggs in this TikTok basket, China, and I know you're going to play all tough about it, but we just almost unanimously passed a bill in our dysfunctional fucking Senate to take away the billions and billions and billions of dollars in revenue that you earn from American TikTok users because our market reaches beyond our own border. American influencers influence people in Europe and all over the fucking world. So if Americans can't use the app, <laughs> yeah it's a oh, lot of, yeah i mean i can see that that's a whole lot of baby with the bathwater, though i mean you know tiktok's a global tiktok is the biggest um brand in the world it's the most profitable brand in the world it, you know it's mm -hmm. in like 190 countries or something like that it's not just a u.s thing and for yeah it, that's why there's in no universe do i believe that they're actually going to pass this they're not going to like TikTok will continue to operate in other countries if it's banned in the US. That'll be a huge blow to TikTok to be sure, but it'll keep operating and there's no fucking way that, you know, the capitalist order in the United States that controls the, you know, that controls Congress uh, is just going to leave the biggest brand of the world on the table, leave all that money on the table, not try to get a stake in it, not try to have American involvement in it. And that's why the, 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 the that's why this the law reads the way that it does. It just it's, as long as they divest from China and allow themselves to be scooped up by some American conglomerate, they can stay. So, mm -hmm. I, or as long as China some opens some store, yeah. Or as long as the owners of the Chinese, like the Chinese owners of TikTok, open some fucking shell corporation in <laughs> Delaware yeah, and yeah. transfer their shares to that company. And yeah. then bing, bang, boom, the Chinese government is literally not involved, even if the same, like, literally the exact same people could own the shares in TikTok that they own. All they need to do is LLC in Delaware the way everybody else fucking does when they want to avoid taxes. Like, I'm just saying, this is not quite the crisis situation. LLC in, in Biden's home state of Delaware. That'd be funny. The Delaware is a little bit famous for how easy it is to open up shell corporations. The, is all I'm saying. Well, yeah, there's more corporations in Delaware because they have like no corporate law whatsoever. No you fucking can do laws in, Delaware. <laughs> in Delaware. The state is this big. It's this yeah. big. And the reason they have it is because they're like, well, we have 12 people as a tax base. So we might as well let every company in the world <laughs> open here. And I almost like, uh I almost incorporated this podcast in Delaware. It's tempting. They make it really tempting. I didn't because yeah. I, you know, I, I decided to be a, you know, a good citizen. Or God damn it, Troy. We can be a really Delaware tempting. LLC. You can be a tax free Delaware LLC. Byless Coffee Media based in Delaware. Delaware. Uh, <laughs> Why? Because somebody's got to go to because. Delaware. I wonder how that works. You know, the, the thing with like multinational corporations is like, how do you completely divest from the Chinese economy? There's going to be there's going to be Chinese investors that might be part of this. There's going to be people that are invested well, like the Yaz guy. There's going to be people that are invested in Chinese companies that are probably going to be involved. So it's not like you're totally removing the Chinese interest in TikTok just because it's no longer owned by ByteDance. I don't yep. know. It's weird. What weird. I think they're probably going to have to do is any Chinese owners or whatever are going to have to blind trust it or whatever, or they're going to have to sell it to another like yeah. shell entity, or they're going to just renegotiate in the Senate to put like a certain percentage of divested or whatever. I don't know. They'll work something out, but is TikTok going away? No, it's not fucking going. It's away. not going away. And I, the, the videos like that were stuck three years from now, but it's not going away. <laughs> well, I, yeah, the idea of it not going away and being totally compromised is almost worse to me. I just like, please don't destroy what it is now. Uh, don't turn it into Twitter or whatever or Facebook. Yeah. Um, but uh, the 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 sad kids on TikTok over the past couple of weeks, the videos, the like TikTok is going away videos have just been heartbreaking. 
It's like it's just like oh my god, <laughs> you know. this this government hates us. Not, they're not doing anything about gun violence or the environment or you know prices of college or price of housing. The only thing they're doing is literally taking away the one thing in our lives that give us gives us joy. It's like it's like the only thing that makes me happy. Or you're gonna take it away. This is just and that's sad. why that's why I thought it was really important to kind of explain the geopolitical economic chess move that this yeah. is because like when you realize that this is us trying to flex our muscles again then it's a little bit like oh okay i get it a little bit does it suck sure like you can be annoyed by it all day long it's just not likely to happen because of what i don't it think really it's uh, is actually about. unless the other possibility i don't think it passes the senate either and i don't think biden signs it but the only other possibility that i can think of it's spooky to me that this got like two thirds vote in the house. There was like North of 320 representatives voted for this Democrats and Republicans, tons of Democrats voted for this. Um, and it's because they said they've been parlayed to these like intelligence briefings about what the Chinese government's up to. So the other other option is that it's, you know, the, to consider is that maybe it's legitimate, maybe it's legitimate concern. I have absolutely no idea the threat that like Chinese data mining could pose to the United States that, you know, good old fashioned American billionaire data mining wouldn't pose. Um, and, you know, I don't understand why TikTok is dangerous if Facebook's not dangerous, but I don't know, maybe well, Biden does something. Is, maybe, maybe it's crazy. I don't know. Well, no, I mean, just to, just to that point, like, let's say that TikTok is just doing the exact same thing that Facebook, Twitter and everybody else is doing. It's one thing to have your own people spying yeah. on your own people and manipulating them. It's a completely different thing to have an adversarial nation be able to do the same thing. See 2016, right? Like the Russian government was able to use TikTok or not just TikTok, but social media in general to sway the election. They're not saying that anything has happened with TikTok. They're saying the potential mm -hmm. is there and there's tension with this nation. And we don't want to be in a situation where this country that we could potentially have conflict with at the drop of a hat has an algorithm we haven't figured out that can be used to weaponize our insecurities against us. That's like TikTok is just Skynet, I think, is what they're afraid of. And okay. they would rather know what Skynet is than let China know what Skynet is. Like TikTok is literally like a self-destruct feature on your phone that's gonna kill us all. No, yeah. I just mean that like, <laughs> you know, it's 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 a powerful thing that people don't fully understand and you don't want only your enemies knowing. It's the reason the Soviets started studying H bombs. It's not because right. they desperately wanted an H bomb, it's because they knew we had one and they couldn't let only us have it. So why are we going after TikTok? Because they have something we don't have and we at least need the same thing or access to it. Yeah. That's it. Because yeah. TikTok algorithm is better than anybody else's and they know it and they haven't been able to crack it. So this is how they're going to do it. <laughs> it's so it's so American. It's just like, you it's know, what? So American they, indeed. oh, but. man, somebody came out with a better product. You know, it's like rather than just, you know, to build Let's the better product <laughs> like we nope. used to. Yeah, let's oh, no, now we have to bankrupt their country and overthrow their government. It's <laughs> the it's post Reagan America, Corporate man. Warfare. Come on. Now. Using Basically. the government to engage in like a hostile takeover of a Ford Basically. company. Basically, man, 80s guy. Remember that episode of uh, Futurama, like 80s guy and his bonitis? Uh, <laughs> I took over the Galactic Empire, but I forgot to cure my bonitis. Never yeah. mind. I, I watch nerdy TV shows. Bonitis. Yeah, that sounds fun. Bonitis. Um, so, I mean, like, I'm not saying that China's not interested. I'm not saying that China doesn't wage like constant war on the United States in various different ways, economic war. Um, I'm just saying they have they're a little preoccupied at the moment. Their economy is collapsing. Uh, you know, Xi Jinping might be forced out here soon because his you know his grand vision of a 21st century that's <laughs> controlled by China, the Chinese 21st century, uh, is not coming to fruition. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's not looking good. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I'm not uh, too worried. A <laughs> couple of other quick stories. Uh, this just happened. SCOTUS rules. That the Texas police can arrest migrants at the border, um, possibly in violation of international yeah, law. This that. is really strange. Like, Texas is just out of pocket on this migration stuff. Uh, Attorney General Ken Paxton, since surviving his impeachment trial, has just been on a fucking mad tear of fascism in Texas, trying to get as much of this like stuff done that as possible before somebody figures out that he needs to be in jail. Um, on the uh, on the culture war stuff too but now they've passed the law in texas that the state police can just arrest people coming across the border um basically um you know 
uh, taking over for federal border patrol. So issues of federalism there that I'd like to get your your opinion on, but also possibly damaging relations with Mexico. This has been held up in the Supreme Court for about a month now. And today, randomly, yesterday, it was so random. Yesterday, they delayed it again. They delayed it indefinitely, only to only to have a vote taken today to let the Texas rule go, Texas law go through. So it's kind of a weird, I don't know what the fuck is going on with SCOTUS right now, but um, it was, weird. it was. To be fair, it was a vote to let the law go into effect while they review it. So it's still potential that they could throw it out. But it's one of those, like, instead of staying the law, we'll let you enforce the law until we review (laughs) it, which is hmm, um, suspicious. Um, What do I think will happen here? I think everybody that gets arrested by the Texas uh, police, if they know enough to challenge the arrest... With like, and I like, if I were a, an attorney, I would be down in Texas waiting for every Texas police officer I saw arrest a migrant and be like, Hey, oh, yeah. let's go have this arrest thrown out of court because of jurisdictional issues with federal powers. Like, it's gonna be, they're not allowed. That's going to yeah, be such like, a mess. They're going to arrest yeah. hundreds of thousands of people, and all of those court cases are going to be tied up because every single one of those people is going to sue under constitutional. Like, the, the yep. Biden administration <laughs> doesn't even recognize this as legitimate. So it's like, you know. Well, here's my you want my slight conspiracy theory on this one, and it's not really a conspiracy theory. It's a you're all about the conspiracy theories lately. I like it only <laughs> because Kate Middleton is dead. I'm convinced. The no, Kate but Middleton this one, thing. The Kate Middleton thing. I'm all about a royal conspiracy. But no, like my theory on this one is royal that um, that like they know the bot that they wanted the border issue and they lost the border issue essentially, and they know they lost the border issue. So what I think this is going to do, because the other thing they like to attack is the Justice Department. So I think the Supreme Court has just set up to attack the Biden Justice Department for releasing the migrants that the state of Texas is trying to arrest migrants to get them off the street. A Texas work trying to get these criminals off the street, and the Biden administration keeps releasing them. Keeps yeah. releasing. that's what I think. That's what I think they're trying to do. Because it's Ken yeah. Paxton, and, and and that's what I think they're going to try and do. So every time one of these undocumented people is arrested by a Texas state trooper, they'll have to be released because of federal power violations. And then that will be spun into Republican ads and Republican conservative media fodder for like, oh, Biden's weak on the border. Look at his Justice Department releasing all of these people that Texas tried to arrest. That's all it's going to be. Yeah. And they're they're framing it like uh, you know preemptive arrests or whatever, which is not constitutional. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what Almost you like could. We've had this fight before. You it, know? <laughs> what are they going to be arresting them on? Like they're they say people that commit crimes at the border or whatever, but this is just a broad swath of of power to just start locking people up as soon as they come over. Mm-hmm. Once again, you know, entering a country to seek asylum is not illegal. Um, what mm-hmm. they if they are asylum seekers, they are allowed to be here. They are allowed to cross the border. That's half of what the border patrol does. 70% of what the border border patrol does is just suss out who's trying to sneak in and who's trying to come in legit to ask for asylum. So, yep, I mean, Texas, gonna... the Texas state police are going to do that. They're going to, they're going to suss out asylum seekers. They're just going to throw people in jail. Yep. It's you can't gonna, do that. You can't back. preemptively arrest people before they can, before they commit the crime. You can't do that. Yep. This is going to backlog the courts. It's going to cost the state of Texas money. They're going to try and turn it into a political battle. It's it's going to get ugly and it's going to get ugly so fast, but it shouldn't surprise anybody because it's fucking Texas. It's fucking like, Texas is anybody surprised when Texas is doing something gross? I'm never surprised when Texas does something gross. They're the only state that gives Florida a run for their money. Still sitting on the 30 billion or whatever money they got from the feds to address the, uh, to address yeah. the border crisis while they're running massive budget surpluses in that state. I don't know. Shady yeah. as fuck, bro. Yeah, indeed it is. Can't pack it in Greg Abbott, some shady motherfuckers. Uh, yeah. Speaking of shady motherfucker, Tommy Tyrevall got caught saying on camera, telling a group of Utah Republican delegates that we are losing our kids to a satanic cult. Really bizarre. I saw um, that one. Like literally right before we sat down, I saw that video and I'm like, yeah. this motherfucker is out of his mind. Really bizarre stuff um, mm-hmm. from Tyberville. Again, just and the thing that I noticed was like nothing policy substantive whatsoever. That guy Whoa. is so devoid of he was elected in Alabama because he was a fucking college football coach. And um, that's all he talks about when I was coaching. Yeah, when I was coaching. He has when I was coaching. no idea. He, uh, he it's like it's, it's like he didn't even follow politics before he became a senator. He has no idea how government works. What's what the Constitution says. Uh, he doesn't know what IVF is. Like he's just he's a complete. Oh, that was useless. the best. You you watch him give these like speeches, and it's all just there's nothing substantive at all. It's all just you know the the right wing cultural war stuff about trans people. 
I know. He's ridiculous. But he's and so dumb. Like every time you hear him talk, you're just like, wow, this motherfucker is stupid. <laughs> yeah. So pretty bad. Um, mm-hmm. Stumping for this guy. Uh, what the hell is this guy's name? Uh, the guy that's the guy trying to, to replace Romney. Yeah. yeah he's, repl- he's, he's got like a stupid name. Um, Shocking. Uh, Trent Staggs. Trent Staggs. Mm-hmm. He's, got, he's got a good old oh like country God. boy name. Trent Staggs. I was gonna say. I was gonna say it sounds like no. If a, if a if a redneck and a country club guy had a bastard love child, Trent Staggs. Because <laughs> Trent is very country clubby, right? But, you know, you get it. I wonder how many bastard love children Tommy Dar- Tommy Tuberville Tom has. I would rather yeah. not think about that just for my uh, mental health sake. <laughs> He's he's thinking about dropping out of the Senate and just going back to football, which I think he's I, I think he should absolutely do. <coughs> Good. Good. Then um, we get rid of the filibuster. And maybe I don't know. We might be close to the number then. I don't know. Can't even Chuck tell Schumer you. calls for elections in Israel. Um calling for Benjamin Netanyahu, essentially calling for um uh the uh Israeli parliament to call for elections, um, which I think they said they will not do while they're at war, which is pretty shady. Uh, yeah. Schumer says it's time mm-hmm. for elections in Israel, effectively saying that it's time for Netanyahu to go. Uh, Netanyahu was pissed, um, saying that that's not for you know anyone outside of Israel to determine. Which I, I mean, technically, I agree with that, but still, it's but it's Netanyahu. Um, Do I know what I wrote about that? Like, yeah. I know it's on that one. I was like, to that, I'll say, cute. You must be new here. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like really, like, bro. <laughs> Phoebe, where you been, sweetie? Come on. Yeah. Like our brand. It's what we do, baby. (laughs) Biden agreed. We're not dating your country. (laughs) Biden agreed with Schumer. He was at the Friends of Ireland luncheon with Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar uh, talking about Gaza because the Irish are really concerned about the situation in Gaza. Um, And said he agreed. He agreed with Schumer. Mm -hmm. It's time for elections in Israel. So. Again, Biden showing signs that uh, that he and Bibi are on the outs. They had a phone call this weekend. It was the first time they'd talked in months. Um, the Benjamin Netanyahu government, none too happy with Biden calling for uh, increased aid to Gaza, calling for a ceasefire. It's now the official policy of the Biden administration for an immediate ceasefire. Not a permanent ceasefire, but an immediate ceasefire. Um, so, yeah, it's getting it's getting a little hairy there. Yeah. I know. I was reading about it. And one, can we just say Canon called it? Did Canon call it? Canon called it. Of course, Canon called like, it. I like to point that out. Um, there were a couple of things. Like, there was a quote from BB that I actually wrote down that I thought was funny. Um, uh, you kind of alluded to it. The It's inappropriate for a sister democracy to try and replace oh, the yeah. elected leadership there. Um, like, sister I think democracy. the point. Well, yeah, like it, it, it's the nerve of himself to call himself a sister democracy. No, I know. I that had that he, save. Like, I'm like, fuck you. Like, <laughs> you're not a democracy. Like, like, fuck you. Like, 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 like the fact that your coalition government was formed together with bubblegum and scotch tape after an attack by Hamas because everything was so dysfunctional, you couldn't form a government, right? Like, re- yeah. remember, we're all aware that that happened. Um, but it's it's also like. He made some comments about how he's unhappy about the press coverage that's coming out of the United States and like uh, certain things that the media has said have upset BB because, you know, they have referred to the genocidal actions and the lack right. of human like like they, they have gotten to where they're calling what he is what he is and he doesn't like that and he wants Biden to do something about it but BB sorry I know you're not a fan of free press out there in dictator land you and Putin and 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 all of you we know you don't like a free press but a free press is allowed to piss you off and mm-hmm. if they're calling your genocide a genocide perhaps look in the mirror instead of trying to shut down the free press of uh <clears throat> to use your words sister democracy <laughs> like Eat a dick, BB. That's what it is. Um, <laughs> it's but this like is sister what I said, democracy right? has a free press and freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. But it's like, remember I said that guy who uh, Gans was it that was over there? Was it Gans? Yeah, Benny Gans. Yeah, yeah. Who, yeah, who was over there talking to the Biden administration? You said, oh, he's over there as an envoy for BB. I said, or, or 
or he's there to drop a bug in the ear that we would really like to see new elections in your country. So if you well, know that, yeah, I, agree, start... I agreed with you on that. And the, the, the timing of this is yep. interesting. The fact that Gans was just here and now they're like, and then a week later, now we're publicly yeah. calling for elections. Come on. And the fact that they had Chuck Schumer do it, who is a Jewish member of Jewish, Congress. Yeah. I'm the highest saying, ranking, uh-huh. the Senate Majority Leader, essentially the highest ranking member of Congress, like, without uh-huh. you know, except for the Speaker of the House, who is you know this Speaker is useless. But the highest ranking member of Congress, who is a Jewish man, um, a Jewish Democrat, uh, calling for new elections. The optics of that, you know, is pretty cool. Right after, right after Gans was here, um, mm-hmm. so it's 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 taking them a long time. This is a chess move that is taking fucking forever. Um, and a lot of people are dying and that's kind of what's pissing me off about it. And that's, what's pissed me off about Biden for years is like, it just takes him forever to get to the point. It's like, okay, like we got to wait for this guy to like figure out what the right thing to do is. And in the meantime, like a million people are going to die. Well, I think the problem with it is, and this is one of those generational problems that I speak to in the politics, like Biden knows what he's doing and he knows how to make things happen, but he doesn't know how to make them happen in the social media age, or at least at the speed the social media age depends on, because he's still in the old guard enough to know that you have to give this time, you need to give this time, you have to open negotiations, and he's still doing things at a 1990s pace, but social media doesn't allow for a 1990s pace in in foreign policy and while like and it's not just biden that's doing that this is a global problem and part of the reason that there is so much global conflict is because in the age of social media we expect the instant gratification and the quick remedies and the quick resolutions like we can binge watch tv shows we don't have to deal with cliffhangers anymore right so cliffhanger (laughs) foreign policy doesn't work but cliffhanger foreign policy is all anybody knows we don't have a budding crop of statesmen that know how to do it any differently so the problem is is that the only know the only way we know how to deal with international relations is not making people happy that have all of a sudden clued into international relations and can keep up with it on their on their twitter feed essentially international relations does not move at the fyp pace and until <laughs> people understand that it's just gonna be everybody pissed off until resolution is met and resolution usually takes like six months so mm-hmm. uh i'm just saying yeah yeah, yeah. uh yeah no I, but again you can't understate the mm-hmm. importance of Chuck Schumer making that that comment. You know, it wasn't Moskowitz. It wasn't you know, it wasn't a member of the House. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a member of the cabinet. It was it was Senate Majority, majority Leader. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, treaties are treaties are made in Senate. Mm-hmm. Um, so pretty pretty mm-hmm. crazy stuff. Senate is the foreign policy branch of government. Mm-hmm. Um, on the other side, and you know, to draw the comparison of like why both parties are not the same, even on on Israel. Um, uh, Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, formerly his head of Middle East policy, the director of mm-hmm. inexplicably the director of Middle East policy in the Trump White House, uh, is calling for Gaza to be cleared out so that they can build beachfront properties, or at least saying that beachfront properties in Gaza would be a valuable investment. Uh, Kushner spoke at Harvard University on March 8th, praising the value, potential value of Gaza's waterfront property. Gaza actually does have some pretty nice beaches. It suggested that Israel move the people out and clean up the area. Uh, he was so ethnic of, cleansing, ethnic cleansing <laughs> like literal for beach like, for beach <laughs> beach houses. Uh, he's speaking with Harvard weird. professor Tariq Masood. Kushner suggested moving Gaza's residents to make way for development. He proposed relocating civilians from Gaza to the Negev Desert in southern Israel, which is like a really sharp point of israel it's like it's empty because it's just it's like sand desert it's there's nothing, desert there's so nothing there. rem- like uh, remove these two million people from their beautiful lands and their prosperous like natural resources and throw them into the desert so i can profit off of beachfront condos i hope he dies a painful <laughs> death when his time comes when his time comes i hope it hurts is, is saying uh say to well to be fair saying evacuate the people not just slaughter the people but i mean what what difference does it make to them that's just like because Russia evacuated the Jews so Hitler could slaughter them. Okay, so it's not much different, Jared. Yeah, the Jews were evacuated from Germany and Poland. That's what happened. Uh, Gaza, quote, Gaza's waterfront property could be very valuable if people would focus on building up livelihoods, Kushner said, adding. But in addition to that, I would just bulldoze something. I would just bulldoze something in the Negev. I would try to move people in there. 
I think that's a better option. So you can go in and finish the job. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, so, I mean, they're, they're not going to be trying to hide it anymore. I mean, if Kushner is saying this out loud, you know, BB and his little like right wingers and in, in the Knesset have been thinking this for decades. Um, they just want the Palestinians gone. They want their land. That's, that's this is what it's always been about. It's just Israeli mm-hmm. colonialism. You know, it, ironically, they wanted the West Bank because that's where all the holy sites are and that's where all the Israeli settlers um, wanted to live. So that's why they wanted the West Bank. They didn't really give a, sh- a shit that much about uh, Gaza and, and the beachfront areas because that's not where all the religion was. It's just that, you know, the nice, they just have nice beaches, but that's not where anything like in the Bible happened. But now well, they want Gaza because they want to be able to put like beachfront properties in the, you know, on the Gaza Strip. So well, I don't know. It's because sad. BB's God is clearly capitalism. capitalism? <laughs> BB yeah. doesn't. Bibi doesn't care. He's willing to go after the West Bank to make the Israeli people happy, right? He's like, I'll steal extra land for you, but I want the developer land. I worship the god of money. That is all I care. I hate <laughs> Benjamin Netanyahu so much. I, I hate him so much. He's they, such an evil motherfucker. I hate him so much. They rounded up all the Palestinians in southern Israel and moved them into the Gaza Strip because the land was fertile there. They gave away all the Palestinian like farmland in the south to Israeli settlers. That's the point of the Gaza Strip. Mm-hmm. They took them off their land and trans and basically transposed mm-hmm. them into this like urban hellscape yep. so that the so that the farmland could be given to Israeli settlers. Now they want to move them out of the you know the 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 urban centers into the sand desert where nothing's going to grow so that they could have the beachfront property. Like just, Oh my God, you cannot get any more evil than these people. They're terrible. I hate, I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. The the government. I want to be very clear. I don't want people coming at me. The Israeli government under Benjamin Netanyahu, yeah. this iteration. Yeah. I want to be very, very clear. I wish I was a Jewish person because I'm Catholic and that would just piss off everybody that raised me. Um, like at St. Joan of Arc, not like, not like my parents or anything. Well, they probably get this too. But like, the point is, is like, I love the Jewish faith. I love the Jewish people. I hate the Jewish government. If Kushner, the, this, Jewish government, the Israeli government, mm-hmm. the Israeli government. Yeah. If this is Jared Kushner, this is Donald Trump's son-in-law, his former director of Middle East policy. This isn't just some random schmo who got $2 billion from the Saudis. Who got $2 billion dollars from the Saudis. If he is saying this, I am telling you, if he's saying this out loud, I am telling you, if Trump wins, you're going to have a genocide of the Palestinians and you're going to have a Trump Tower Gaza. I'm telling you this right now. Like You want to like cry genocide, like just wait. You haven't seen it yet. Like, because if Donald Trump got reelected, you'd see a straight up and and he'd go, he'd genocide the West Bank too. He would kill every Palestinian person in anything that was, is, or BB wants to be Israel. Like it. Yeah, you're gonna have <laughs> Trump golf courses, you know, hotels, resorts. Can that's, you that's what they want. Like, that's what they want. That's Mount, their business. Mount it's just, Sinai is the ninth hole, or some shit. I'm just saying, like, I when when Jesus comes back, I hope he finds that motherfucker. That's what they do. They develop land. They develop. They they take poor people land and develop for develop it for rich people. So they're gonna um, gentrify the holy land. <laughs> Yeah, that is Trump Tower next, Bethlehem. <laughs> that is next level either. You know what? It'll be hilarious. Next, like Trump Tower Bethlehem will turn away Mary once again. No room at Trump Tower. Yeah, he is Herod and Pontius Pilate and all those people combined. Donald Trump. No, no, uh, no shortness of irony in America. He's gonna out Herod. Herod. Oh boy. Oh boy. Pretty bad. Uh. Speaking of, and then the other, this is probably our last story, but the other, uh, the other um, side of the family. Uh, so Eric Trump's wife, Laura Trump, is his Trump's daughter-in-law, is now the co-chair of the Republican National Committee, and has been saying that she wants to do nothing but fundraise for Trump. Like all RNC money is going to be going to Trump, including his legal fees. So turning the Republican National Committee into basically just like. Um, uh, a slush fund for Donald call, Trump's legal fees. What they call it, like uh, Trump's <laughs> Venmo, like Trump's personal Venmo That's machine. Hilarious. Um, that is hilarious. She's the co-chair of the Republican Party. Okay, so she goes on uh, the Alex Stein show do you, on the Blaze. Do you know Alex Stein? Do you know who he is? Who he is? Not, but I can imagine he's you don't. probably your... you, Well, you're about to find. You're about to get a little bit of a taste goody. of it. Oh, um, goody. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Stein is this um, outrage farmer 
uh, he's like he's essentially ostensibly he's the like man on the street reporter for the Blaze, which is the Blaze is like this right wing garbage site that was founded by Glenn. It was started Beck. by Glenn Beck, yeah. Um. So, but Alex Stein, the Blaze has been trying to position itself as like a legitimate, like you know, almost like a right wing Midas or something, like a legitimate right, you know, conservative news source. But they have this guy, Alex Stein, who does these on the street things. And his entire purpose in life is just to get is just to elicit like violent responses from people. So he will go to like protests and like make fun of people, get in people's faces. He challenged a pregnant woman. At a, he was saying like racist things to this pregnant uh, Latina woman at a Taco Bell once. This pregnant woman like tried to punch him in the face. He was being so he was being so offensive. Wow. But he he has his own. He's just the he's awful cat. Like he's the worst of the worst. Uh, he's just a disgusting person. Um, Given how bad the right wing commentators are bad. to be the worst of them is almost impressive. Like, I am telling you right bad. now that he might be the worst, like the wow. worst right wing uh, media media personality. You're about to get a sense of it here. So Laura Trump goes on his show. So the new co-chair of the Republican National Committee, one of her first media appearances is on Alex Stein's show on The Blaze. And it just it got fucking weird. This, his co-host brings out a baby, wants her to autograph his baby. Um, and then it just gets gets really fucking weird. The, the guy in the American if, for people watching the first guy talking, the guy in the American flag suit is Alex Stein's like producer. Stein There's is an sitting American on, flag suit. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the sign is sitting on the set uh, with Laura Trump in like a regular suit. Oh, so she just threw up a little bit. Oh, so oh, yeah, here, yeah. Here, just hold just here's the here's the burp wrap in case she throws up. Oh, my God. So, okay. yeah. So um, I would like you if you could just give her a signed copy of Baby Tiffany. So do you have, you have your book? Do you have a pen or something, Jimmy? Oh, I have a pen. Okay. Where's your Where's uh Wait, Where's your book? Please stop using. Tiffany. Please, honestly, Jimmy, you're going too far by giving her the baby and all this stuff. We dude. have a Tiffany in I our know, family. Didn't, we didn't go over this. So you're going to give her the baby. Oh, no, on it's, this it's show. okay. It's okay. She I mean, likes my can, necklace and my hair. She's wait, can you can fan. you wait? Do you have Do you have the book? Oh, I don't have a copy of the book. Okay, well, good. I brought a backup. You can just sign this. Just say to baby Tiffany. Love Laura. Um, sorry, I don't have a free hand, so you're gonna have to hold the baby. I'm, I'm doing it all. Um, yeah, yeah so really just good. you just do this. Casual. Um, Two. Baby Tiff. She, uh, or baby Tiffany. Baby Tiff. Gosh, Jimmy, Jimmy, we've told you so many times to stop bringing your baby on set. Jimmy, I don't know why I'm sick you keep of you doing this. And your dumb baby on our set. Ah! Oh my God. That's what we do with all. babies on our set. So they have an actual baby on the set. It's time to just kick the baby off. Oh, okay. Thank God. I know we don't. We're not allowed to punt real babies. Gosh. Joe Biden. Is okay, America. sorry. I'll just. I'll get off. Jimmy, set. get off okay, set. Sorry, just sorry, leave the baby sorry. with me. We're good. We'll do. This is later. All right, guys. This has been a tremendous interview with the one, the only Laura Trump. Still has the baby doll. He's lighting the baby doll on fire. Oh crap! I'm trying to burn this. Uh, trying to catch this baby doll on fire. Jimmy, I caught it on fire. Is this bad or is this good? And that's why I always like to use a real baby. Like you see this fake baby, you can just hit the baby and kick the baby. I mean, that's not good. I mean, you Hitting can just do anything to this baby. baby you can just foot. kick it. And, and the Trump Biden. Sometimes I'll take off my shoe. I like to grab the baby. I like to hold the baby like this, and I like to. You can zoom in. And I just hit the baby's head. I just hit the baby's head as hard Beating as I the can. Baby's head with a shoe. This is horrible. Alex Stein's school of babysitting. Weird well, like bomb sounds going off. The that. reason number one million why I'll never let you babysit. But Laura This is how I babysit. Oh gosh. Oh give me the baby. Time to babysit. This is how I was this is how I was uh, reared as a child, and that's why I became so strong. <laughs> I mean that explains a lot. So you got hit in the head as a child, is that what you're saying? Yeah, you my dad told you he hit me on the head a bunch. Real baby. Maybe if you stopped worrying about your damn baby and started letting it smoke. You'd actually be a good father. They actually say that if you get your kid and you make him smoke a pack of cigarettes all at once and you get him violently ill from nicotine poisoning, the chances of him smoking again is very low. Keep so, yeah, he goes on to uh, light the baby on fire again. This time he uh, lights the baby's hand on the baby doll's hand on fire. So interesting, uh, interesting segment. <laughs> well, um, I have some thoughts. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that was kind of long, but I, you, you got to see it. It's just they're just so disturbing. They're just such disturbing, sick people. Yeah, I um first of all, like probably the the least important part of this, but like was he wearing sneakers without socks and gross? <laughs> he was. Right? Like and then like little put his aspect ugly of ass, <laughs> a little his put his ugly feet up like unnecessary, but also like isn't this the same political party that's forcing everybody to have babies cuz they exactly. love babies and his whole like shtick is I'm going to beat and burn the babies like i yeah. 
have so many <laughs> confusing thoughts in my head on that one. I I'm out. I'm done. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, you got me on that one. Yeah. So just a little taste of uh, how how what a horrible like disgusting person is. I can't even. He yeah he 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 makes my skin crawl. He's so he's so weird and gross. Yeah. I think he's younger than us too. In a weird like it's weird. It's he's like a younger guy. Um, I'm like deeply fascinated and also mortified at this. But also okay. So the point of that though is that Laura. That's the show that Laura Trump went on. Trump's daughter-in-law, the chair of the Republican National Committee. That's the that's the type of media that she's that she's doing. So I mean, in, in a sense, it's an endorsement from the uh, from the Republican Party for um, for Alex Stein and for his type of um, his type of behavior. Um, he's thirty. He's just he's pure like antisocial. Like, he's just the he's just antisocial GOP. Just he's all about just like um, you know making people miserable and and hurting people. So. Yeah. yeah, he is. Uh, he's 37. I just looked at it. He was born okay. in uh, yeah, 1986. Awesome. But yeah, what? Just. Yeah, he's pretty bad. Woof. Um, yeah, I don't I don't even have words to respond to that one. He's just something special. Right. There. A couple other quick stories before we go. Trump, uh, Trump making more anti-Semitic comments, uh, saying any Jewish person that votes for Democrats hates their religion. They hate everything about Israel and they should be ashamed of themselves. Back to Obviously. the. Uh, the difference in the um you know trump's handling of israel and biden's handling handling of israel i'm telling you trump tower gaza is coming uh yes. mike pence won't endorse trump that was big news over the weekend i so, think that is the best thing ever mike pence uh said he could not in good conscience uh endorse donald the trump largely for how donald trump has been the language that he's been using to describe the january 6th insurrectionists calling them um, patriots and hostages etc yeah yes. um Fonnie Willis gets to stay on the Georgia case. Judge rules that uh, the, her sleeping with her coworker doesn't disqualify her from hearing the case, which is a weird argument. But he has to go. Either either Nathan Wade has to leave the case, or Fonnie Willis can't can't try the case. Nathan Wade immediately resigned um, so that the case can go forward with Fonnie Willis. Sort of an act of kind of a weird, weirdly chivalrous act there. Um, but her uh, sometimes well, she boyfriend. did all the fucking work, you know. <laughs> like, and he's probably aware of that. Yeah, yeah. He's not gonna fucking stay out the case. Mm -hmm. uh, so her sometimes, sometimes boyfriend, prosecutor Nathan Wade, off the case, uh, and that case will continue. Uh, and then Ruth, <laughs> it's such a weird story. So the Opperman Foundation gives this award called the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Leadership Award. Not affiliated with Ruth Bader Ginsburg's family in any way. It's just the the founder of that foundation and Ruth Bader Ginsburg were friends and got her permission to use her name on an award. Uh, traditionally, it went to a woman who demonstrates like positive change in the world. It's like a positive force for change. This year, they changed the rules so that men can receive the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Award. The Obvious. first recipients, Elon Musk and Rupert Murdoch, along with actor Sylvester Stallone and convicted felon Michael Milken. <laughs> convicted felon financier Michael Milken. Uh, as you can imagine, Kathy, the children of Ruth Bader Ginsburg were not happy about this. <laughs> we're not happy the about hell the you say. The of hell you Elon say. Musk and Rupert Murdoch getting the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Leadership Award. Did they change the rules to be like, find the most evil motherfuckers in the world and give them the award? Because that list would make sense then. <laughs> i tell you, the theme of this episode is just evil motherfuckers. Seriously, so, there's um, hashtag evil motherfucker. Uh, large outrage from uh, everybody in the Ruth Bader Ginsburg sphere that this would happen. Again, the family not affiliated with the foundation. No control over who the award goes to. Hi, Kitty. Uh, the news came yesterday that the foundation is <laughs> the foundation's changed their mind. They're canceling the awards. Uh, they've uh, the outcry worked. The they shamed them out of giving the Ruth Bader Ginsburg award to Elon Musk and Rupert Murdoch. So there you go. <laughs> sometimes good things happen That's i guess quite the afternoon troy i'm not gonna lie like that was a lot to take in and process <laughs> we actually made it through the entire outline we never did i that. know yeah. i know and i am officially and i don't are, know devastated and or mortified at the state <laughs> of the world and or country it's fine it's fine the, the choice of, of, of uh, who you want to vote for could not be more clear. You guys, both parties are not the same. Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting. All right, well, I'm going to go vote in the primaries and 
pick up food. What should I get for food? Podcast <laughs> people, you guys never get to weigh in on my poor dietary choices. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for a good conversation, Kathy. Go vote. Uh, go vote for go for uh, for Biden in the primary. There. Uh, check us out on Patreon, everybody. P a t r e o n dot com. Oh, we have a guest this week, uh, Kathy. Do you want to tee that up real quick? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a guest um, later this week for the Patreon folks. Um, yeah, yeah, I um, I um, I have two little baby uh, baby birds who are all grown up. And Troy, I'll probably talk you into this. We can release it early on Patreon, but I think I will want to release it like publicly, sure. uh, like down the road, because. Um, these two students both attend college in universities in Florida um, and are both actively involved in either their student government or their, you know, campus political organizations. One is uh, the communications director for the College Democrats of the University of Central Florida. Nice. Um, and the other is uh, a student senator for the change party at the University of Florida running for re-election. And the two of them are going to come and we're going to talk about what uh we'll chit chat a little bit about was everything i told you about college true because we're gonna have that little <laughs> little because there they are they are my little babies but uh basically what's been going on on their campus with some of the the dei initiatives that have been taken away because of the DeSantis administration uh sarah the girl from university of florida she'll speak at length at length from the interactions i've had with her th thus far on some of the changes ben sass has made since uh, being appointed to the, you know, president of the university and uh, Jaden, who is the uh, director of communications for the college gems at UCF is going to tell us about some of the campus wide organizations and protest movements and things like student activism that's been happening on campus in response to uh, some of the things. And I think there's like one story they told me about like, the organization shouting down some like weird right wing conservative posts. I don't know. I didn't get all the details because it was one of it those like, oh, just yeah, maybe like just <laughs> it was one of those. Tell me about it later. And I forgot to follow up on it. So some stories about what is actually happening on the college campuses here in Florida, nice. the impact it's Love actually that. having on students and some of the actions that they are taking to get involved on campus, successes they've had, frustrations they've had and messages to their fellow uh, you know, young baby voters to get off your asses and do something. Just do something. Love that. Love so, that. Good, in, yeah, good inspiration uh, stuff. Be, yep. So that'll be Thursday, probably when we release that one. I, yeah, yeah, probably we're releasing for the Patreon folks this week, probably Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, sometime after that, release to the general, probably pro public, probably mm -hmm. the following week. Um, but subscribe to Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com slash just buy less coffee. Get access to exclusive content like that. Not all of our interviews are released to the public, mm -hmm. our special guest interviews. We have more interviews coming up in the next month or so, including with some, uh, some famous um, media personalities and people from politics. Uh, we also have besides behind the seeds content and deep dive content mm -hmm. on Patreon. So extra content, bonus content. If you're interested in that, subscribe to Patreon. If you're listening to the episodes on audio only episodes on podcast directories, uh, Apple, uh, YouTube music, Spotify, make sure you click in the download button, download the episode to your device, helps us out with our rankings. If you want to see the video content, go to YouTube, youtube.com slash just buy less coffee. You can watch the video recordings of Kathy and myself looking very pretty on camera for you guys. Uh, thanks everybody. Uh, We've uh, it's been a great uh, great talking to you, Kathy. Today we will see everybody next time. You've been listening to Just Buy Less Coffee, answering the deeper questions of American politics, featuring Troy Matthews at Keep Troy Blue and Kathy Cannon at Cannon's Fodder. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Threads, and X. All opinions are our own.